All righty. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are doing well. Take a moment, pull yourself back away from the charts. I've got my friend Mike here from the Daily Market Forecast. Mike, the market itself has been unique to say the least on this one. Volumes died out, price action. There's a little bit here and there, but the ATRs are definitely tight. And was wanting to get your opinions here. The ES, we are approaching a resisting structure. And we've been in this long-term trading range here on the ES. But what are you seeing as a trader? What are you seeing in the flow in? What are you guys there at the community seeing in, in this current market? Well, you nailed it. The, the ATR, the average true range of the S&P uh, is collapsing. It's, it's almost half of what it was a few weeks ago, right? We're kind of at, you know, I, tr I day trade the, the S&P futures, so I may not be talking about the SPX number or SPY, but, but the S&P futures are like 45 ATR. Um, you know, any other time that would be okay. But when you're coming out of times when you had 70 and 80 point range. Having NASDAQ numbers at that point, it was, yeah. it was something. You know, so in fact, I just did, when you asked about it earlier, I went back on the chart. Let me, uh, let me just go ahead and share the chart real quick with everybody. And uh, you see that okay? Looks beautiful. Yeah. This indicator down at the bottom is the average true range. You notice today it's at like 44 and a half. If you take that line back, we haven't been this tight since November 21. That, that ATR good. has been up above where we are today. So we're going back quite a way. So when you say it's unique, well, unique for the last 18 months anyway, right? Exactly, and, uh, exactly. So what we're doing in my trading room is uh, we're just adjusting our expectations I mean, if you go into a, a, a market like this and you expect to grab, uh, you know, 20, 30 point runners, it's going to be difficult. Uh, it almost has to go in a straight line for that to happen. So we just we just scale back our risk a little bit and we scale back our targets a little bit so that we're kind of in harmony with how it is moving. Right now, this starts to expand again. Well, then you can just go ahead and expand those. One of the things I really like. Uh, to add to the, the strategies we trade is, is a volatility component. You know, when, 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 and here's a classic one that a lot of traders know about and use called a volatility stop. In other words, you're not just picking a stop loss because of the number, you're adjusting it to the volatility in the market at the time. And, and that's what we've been doing. I mean, I, I had a trade the other day that had so little risk on it. I don't remember having one like that. <laughs> you of course, know, I didn't Mike, make that, a ton of money either. But Mike, that brings on a question as well. I've been telling people at these times, they feel much like when we used to trade in 17, 18, except as far as the expectations on things. Do you think we've knocked out a lot of the, for lack of a better term, the gambler's mentality money that has been in the market for a while now? And they lost a lot of it. It went to a lot of steady hands, it seems. And that volatile type of money seems to not be in the market anymore. Do you think that may be the cause of why we're seeing this? Or do you think it's a, a matter of other economic uh, ideas? Gee, I wish I had a great answer for that. I can tell you that, uh, you know, the cat, the re retail traders are piling up some cash. A lot of money is going into cash. And, and that leaves the market a little more professionally run, right? Um, and the professionals know more and have better plans and have deeper pockets. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, benefits they have uh, that we don't have. Of course, the benefit we have is we can get in and out instantly and they got to take days, weeks, or months to do it. But so everybody's got their challenges. But uh, um, I think as far as money coming into the market, the retail trader is usually late. It's pretty safe to say that they're they're not timely in their entries and exits. Uh, they get scared when they see a bear market and maybe they rab it out at the bottom and then they won't come back in until they see it soaring again. So we need some stability with the interest rate question. I think we're getting there and we need some stability with the recession question. Uh, and then I think you'll see the market start to move up again. 
and and that's when the retail person kind of comes in a little late. Hmm, interesting. Just an observation. Yeah, and, and I can agree with you on that. For myself on this, I, I've noticed that for the flow that's coming through, I have pulled my sizing. So, you know, that's something I'm down to a quarter or a half of what I was just a few months ago on there. Have you seen the sizing, not just amongst yourself, but among the community change as we've worked into this new environment? Well, you know, again, because I, I size based on a volatility stop, um, I, my size hasn't changed much. Hmm. You see, see what I'm looking at is I've got a I've got a stop loss that's based on current market volatility, and as that volatility contracts, I'm risking less money. Technically, I could have more size if I wanted it, right? Because I'm trying to peg that risk number. Hmm. But uh, no, I'm keeping the size the same. I'm just uh, I'm just getting a little less on the wins and losing a little less on the losses. How long do you think we'll be in this lower volatility environment? I mean, I know nobody can call the bottom, call the top on this as far as that, but do you think we'll start to trail out of it towards the end of the year? The Fed now starting to say that they actually see a recession and there's already been commentary on possibly a cut of rates. Honestly, I'm not thinking a cut of rates until next year is what I'm figuring on this one, but Maybe I'm wrong on that. What are your thoughts on the duration of this low ball environment? Boy, I'll tell you, I am so focused on day trading this stuff that my my opinions on what's going to happen nine months from now are probably worthless. But, uh, you know, I look at uh, what catalysts are coming out. I'm prepared in front of the screen. I know what how to handle the risk on it. I know where my targets are. And, uh, you know, if it's if it's a narrow range market and this ATR continues to drop down, all it means is that, you know, my paycheck gets a little smaller <laughs> it's, and you can't control that, you know. No, no, you, you got to play the chart in front of you. Yeah, yeah, well, you can you can switch assets. I mean, you know, uh, I just focus so much on the S&P that when it when it comes to like you, you mentioned 2017. Right. In 17, the ATR was about 12. Yeah. So, you know, 45 is a party <laughs> yeah, compared like to it. 17. No, you couldn't even, you couldn't day trade the S&P then unless you were scalping. And, uh, you know, I ended up going doing a lot more work in the oil market back then. But, uh, you, you know, the one nice thing about futures is something's moving. If, if the indexes aren't what's happening, uh, you can usually find another asset that's moving. You know, and Mike, speaking of that overall, for someone that's just getting into working with the futures, we've spoke before on the micro contracts, et cetera. Do you believe that the ES would be a, a great place for them to start now? Or do you think they should go over to something like, I don't know, uh, gold or oil or something like that, that has some volatility in it, but is a little bit of a smaller market too to work with, especially if they're using the micro contracts. What are your thoughts on a market for them to start with? I used to work with this instructor, a uh, great guy, and he he used to start all his students in futures out on the Dow Mini. Now mm. it would be the Dow Micro. And the reason was he had a very cool way of looking at it. You know, there's only st 30 stocks in the Dow. So he'd have that list of stocks up and you'd be looking at the red and the green and was it were they getting bearish or bullish? And he used it kind of as an indicator. You, you can't do that with the S&P with 500 symbols. You'd have to have, uh, you know, way too much up on the screen. But uh, with the Dow, it was good. And and uh, and I thought that was a pretty a pretty good way of starting someone out. The S&P has an awful lot of algo traders, prop shops trading it. So I think it's a it's a little more difficult for a beginner to trade the S&P. Uh, you really got to get in and know this asset and put your chart time in understanding how it behaves. And, you know, uh, time of day is a big thing. A lot of the algos just look at time of day. You know, that brings on an interesting aspect as well. You as a day trader on this one, have you found your, your trading times within the day cutting down? I tell most people, whenever I'm trading, 11 o'clock hits, I'm away from the rig on that one. Then I'll come back about 1 2 o'clock on that and try and get that first hour or so at the beginning of the day, hour or so at the end of the day. 
What are your thoughts on that in this current environment? Well, that's pretty much what I do. I actually have uh, a, a pretty deep database of trade results for the strategies that I trade. So I can fine tune that time of day a little bit better than just morning and late in the day. But I gotta tell you, uh, if I had to pick one time that I could be at the market, uh, it'd be the last half hour. Hmm. The last half hour tends to have a pretty good move most of the time. Nothing works all the time, we know that, but uh, I'll always be there from 3.30 to 4 Eastern. Hmm. I like that. I like that. And as you've mentioned, typically trading the ES on that, do you feel the same is true for if someone was trading NQ, oil, or let's say they decided to go to the beans or something like that? Would you be looking no. at about the same time horizons? No, for the indexes, probably, but definitely not for the commodities. Now, oil mm -hmm. flatlines uh, after 2, 230. Gold, gold can start flatlining even earlier. If you really want to trade oil and gold, you got to get up at the London Open. Which yeah, be like, that is true. They do. You know they, I mean? they really run it. They really run it. I like that. I like that. Mike, yeah, you, we're, just move, we're just moving there. I love it. Mike, you've been doing a lot of great stuff with the communities and dropping some great education overall. Would you mind to let the ladies and gentlemen know if they want to come work with you and the team there at the Daily Market Forecast, how can they get a hold of you and read some of the information that you guys have uh, coming out? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, let me just uh, pop up a screen here for you. So the, 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 uh, the website is the dailymarketforecast.com. And what we're doing is we're trading live every day for a couple of hours in the morning. We trade multiple strategies. Each strategy is kind of tuned into certain market conditions. Like, is it trending or is it more of a mean reversion uh, market? And we also do some work with uh, same day credits, uh, credit spreads on the SPX. But uh, but that's the that's the live trading. We have a whole bunch of, of recorded lessons on trading all of our strategies. And uh, and I put out a trade plan twice a day, once for the day session and then once for the Globex session. They trade a little bit differently. Uh, but the best thing anybody could do is just get over to the website and click on that. Uh, get the daily blog, the free daily trading tips. I, I have a, uh, a fresh little lesson every day that I pump out in email about eight in the morning Eastern. And uh, it's got a couple of good S&P trades in it. We track them so you'll be able to start to see the performance. And then, uh, and then once, you get, once you get used to reading that and you have any questions, you can just contact me directly. And we'll see if you're qualified to, to, you know, to day trade with us. I like it. I like it. All righty. Ladies and gentlemen, relevant links in the description below. Mike, thank you for dropping some great knowledge points and getting those gears going for everyone on this one. It's going to be a unique market coming up in the next couple of weeks here as we approach earnings season. And we'd love to get your thoughts as we get closer into that on how that will uh, draw on the futures market. But with that being said, uh, thank you again for dropping some great knowledge. I look yeah. forward to talking with you again on the next one. You're welcome. And I'll tell you what, if, if we could do this between 3.30 and 4 one day, we could put, pop some live trades in for everybody. No, I like that. I like that. I will Think talk a bit that. on that one and we'll see if we can get you on here. Ladies and gents, if you'd like to see some of that live trading as well with Mike from the Daily Market Forecast, let us know in the comments section below. I think that would be a fun one. Mike, thank you again. And you have a great close of the market, my friend. Okay, take care.